Welcome to the 75th anniversary Sweet Adeline's International Virtual Convention. Please join us in welcoming to your screen from Lake Zurich, Illinois, a master director, certified sound judge, tenor for the 2008 International Champion Quartet, Four Bettys, a member of the International Board of Directors and Executive Committee. She is the director of River City Sound Chorus, Region 3, in Rockford, Illinois. Your international president, Joan Boudelier. Hello, and welcome to the Sweet Adelines International 2020 Convention, Our Journey Continues. During our three-day convention, your presence is what makes the awards and special presentations, performance showcases, champion performances, and musical and educational sessions so meaningful. It's typical during a big anniversary event such as this to commemorate and celebrate our 75 years as an organization and forecast into the next 75. It occurred to me recently that rather than simply looking back or looking forward, we have an opportunity to look deeper, deeper into what has kept Speed Adelines going through everything including the pandem pandemic we're in now. I'd like to start today by sharing a story with you. Several years ago, our eldest daughter was married and had a large wedding. Like many couples, our daughter and her fiance hired a professional photographer to commemorate the special day. The photos that were taken caught just the right lighting for each pose and highlighted some unique and unusual settings at the historic venue. The photographer carefully staged the bride and groom along with each family member to ensure a perfect representation of the moments of the big day. It seemed that every click of the camera resulted in a mini work of art, creating a gallery of photos for the happy couple to put on timeless display. The photos in the wedding album paint a picture of a magically flawless and fairy tale day. On that same day, I was thrilled to be an attentive and joyful mother of the bride. I had my cell phone charged and snapped my camera from the first moment of the day to the last. My pictures, unlike the professional photographers, didn't capture the event in quite the same way. To look at my personal wedding photo album, one would see a much wider range of emotions represented. A bridesmaid's distressed face when her dress didn't fit quite right, the messiness of the room where the attendants ate breakfast and had their makeup applied. My photos captured the nervousness of my daughter's eyes when the hairdresser couldn't get her hair to cooperate, and the teariness of my lovely husband when he got ready to escort her across the lawn. My photos, in fact, when added to the ones taken by the hired photographer, depict a day with more dimension, depth, and range of emotion and even different people and small moments scattered throughout the day. I took pictures of what I thought was meaningful to me, literally taken through my own lens from my own perspective. Along with that perspective are the memories of the day. If I were able to take all the photos taken from all the cameras that day and could gather stories from other people who attended, there would be a much deeper view of the same one wedding day. To separate events like this one into one version or several versions in the retelling is inevitable, but there is, of course, no way to capture the complete experience. Such it is with 75 years of history of an organization. Each of us has our own stories, memories, feelings, and perspective, whether we have been a member of Sweet Adelines International for six months or 60 years. One would expect the history of an organization that's been around since 1945 to be as varied as the people it's made up of, and indeed it is. It's important to look deeply into our history so we can see more than just our personal perspective and have a greater understanding of what someone else's photo album might capture. Throughout our 75th anniversary, Sweet Adelines have shared stories and photos from their chorus, quartet, and personal histories. If somehow we could take all the Sweet Adeline photos, videos, and recordings ever taken and could gather stories from every member, 
we would see a much more complete history of who we are, even though it would still be lacking. The best we can do is look as deeply as possible to try to understand our own stories as singers and our collective story as Sweet Adeline's. Although we don't know exactly what it was like, what it felt like, or what it looked like, we do know that the first meeting of what was to become Sweet Adeline's International took place in a kitchen in Tulsa, Oklahoma in July of 1945. And the person who gathered this meeting was Edna Mae Anderson. Simply put, Edna Mae and her friends were feeling left out because they wanted to sing barbershop harmony like their spouses. As the, stories go, as the story goes, from those 41 charter members, wide interest began to grow and spread rapidly into various sections of the United States. Just two years later, a general assembly was called and the national organization was set up. In 1947, the first national convention was held with 14 quartets competing. Chorus competitions were still a thing of the future, but not far off. By the time the second contest was held, Sweet Adelines had incorporated becoming a national organization consisting of 17 chorus chapters with a total membership of 750. And Sweet Adelines continued to grow as more people found the joy of singing barbershop harmony until eventually we became the international organization that we are today with chapters in 12 countries. Each singer who joins Sweet Adelines bring, brings with them not only a voice to contribute to our sound, but a cultural and personal perspective that enhances our understanding of the world. Today, an increasingly diverse community of Sweet Adelines join voices and hearts and strive for ever, grading, ever greater understanding of each other. Unfortunately, it has not always been that way. To continue getting a more complete story of our organization, let's look more deeply into the time frame between the late 1950s and the mid-1960s. This is the part of our 75-year history into which a deep look should be taken so that we can try to understand Sweet Adeline's more completely. One story that helps to illustrate this time period in Sweet Adeline's involves two women, one from Eastern Canada and the other Western Canada. Their names are Lana Clowes and Gloria Stone, and they had something in common besides being barbershop singers. They were of African heritage. During this time frame, as we know, the civil rights movement was growing in the United States, though racist laws and practices persisted. The years which are key to Lana and Gloria's story are 1957, 58, 62, 63, and 66. As at the International Convention in 1957, the International Board announced that membership in Sweet Adelines International was restricted to Caucasians only. In May of 1958, a bylaw of our organization was amended in a vote by the Board of Directors to document the formerly unwritten exclusionary policy, adding the word white, defined as Caucasian, Oriental, or Indian, before the word women, in determination of who could become a member. The spoken announcement and ensuing official documentation of the bylaw were accepted by some, but not by all. In 1962, Canada passed its first human rights code. The next year, in 1963, Lana Klaus, an active member of a chorus in Ottawa, Canada, was denied membership by our organization, Sweet Adelines. In fact, an ethics officer came in person to her chorus to inform the members of Lana's removal. Who was Lana? She was a Sweet Adeline who had gone to college and was a musician all her life. She played the violin, guitar, hand percussion instruments, ukulele, banjo, and piano. In the Ottawa chapter of Sweet Adeline's Lana sang tenor. After Lana's exclusion from Sweet Adeline's, many members of her chapter left the organization 
to help found a chorus for which Lana was the inaugural director in the newly created Harmony Inc. In a newspaper story about Lana's exclusion from Sweet Adeline's, an Ottawa chapter member told a journalist, Lana has a beautiful voice and she is an asset to the chorus. This is heartbreaking for all of us. It is heartbreaking for all of us today, knowing that this happened within the recent history of our organization to Lana and so many other singers who were denied the Sweet Adeline's experience. Today, Lana's daughter, Valerie, is an active member of Sweet Adeline's International, and she gave me permission to share her mother's story today. The exclusionary clause remained in our bylaws until May 1st, 1966. In 1967, the year following the removal of the exclusionary clause, also known as the color bar, Gloria Stone, who was working as a nurse in Victoria, Canada, helped form the City of Gardens Chorus with 27 charter members. Gloria sang lead and also baritone when they didn't have enough parts because she had voice training and understood the part. She loved sewing costumes with her chorus friends and especially liked competition because she loved to meet people. Gloria performed as a Sweet Adeline from 1967 to 1980 when she joined an alumni chorus. Gloria was one of, if not the first, member of African descent to join after the exclusionary bylaw was removed. She reports a wholly positive experience, saying of her time as a Sweet Adeline that, it was just lovely and joyous, I can never forget that. She helped make Sweet Adelines a better organization for all singers, and we are grateful. Two women, two stories, one Speed Adelines International, and one year, only one year, made the difference in these lives. The difference in becoming an accepted, active member of Speed Adelines versus being told you cannot stay because you are Black. It is tempting to look at this part of our history, including the time leading up to, during, and coming out of the color bar as being in the past, something which fell on the leaders of that day but this isn't just their history, it's our history. Today in 2020, we are excited to be taking more and more concrete steps toward ensuring that Sweet Adelines International is the most diverse, equitable, and inclusive organization possible. We do this so that we can unite, join our voices, and become even stronger together. Achieving this vision will take an active commitment from each of us. It asks us to continue learning about one another, celebrating each person's uniqueness, engaging in respectful open dialogue, creating welcoming communities in our choruses, and building bridges between difference. These actions are what I believe will take us proudly into our next 75 years. I have personally come to a deeper understanding of what our 75 years have been like and I know I still have a long way to go. Each time I think I know something, understand someone, hear someone, I go a little deeper. We have members in Sweet Adelines in so many parts of the world now, each with their own story, each with their own challenges, memories, experiences. We can and we must take time to go deeper into each other's story, to get to know each other, understand each other as much as we are able and as much as our hearts will allow. I started today by inviting you to enjoy the activities we're sharing over the course of the next three days. Each day has been planned to emulate that of our usual convention, yet we know it'll be different. We can still learn, listen, think, celebrate, and even sing together in this virtual setting. Each day we have a power-up event during which you'll be led through physical and vocal warm-ups with our own Sweet Adeline's experts in these areas. We'll see heartwarming tributes to our members who've earned awards for outstanding leadership within our organization. We'll celebrate the members who've got their own stories from memberships spanning over 50 and 60 years in Sweet Adeline's. We'll witness personal testimonies from people who have made financial contributions to the organization in order to keep us going through this difficult time 
and to support us as our journey continues. We'll learn from an expert in the areas of diversity, equity, and inclusion about what we can do to take more steps forward using our guiding principles as our compass. And we have our dynamic duo, Karen Breider and Diane Porsche, guiding us through each day's events. Finally, I invite you to go deeper with me too. The stories of Lana, Gloria, Edna May, my story and your story are all a part of our story. Our journey continues. As we reflect on our history, we can see the important role education has played in the life of Sweet Adeline's members over the years. As we look to our future, we are called to transition to new ways of providing for the edu educational needs of our members. With the priorities we now face in light of the pandemic, we must innovate so that we can continue to thrive for the next 75 years. To achieve this educational goal, I am proud to announce the launch of our annual fundraising campaign, Support for 75 Years of Life on a High Note. With a goal of raising 200,000 US dollars, Sweet Adelines is turning to technology to enhance and expand our educational offerings for all members, including online workshops, master classes, microburst educational videos, online learning platforms, virtual seminars and classes, and programs for chorus directors to help enhance the singer experience and inspire creative musical growth. To help us achieve our goal, Judy Gordon, baritone of the 1981 International Champion Quartet, All-Star Jubilee, is extending a very generous challenge gift of $25,000. This means your gift will be matched dollar for dollar. All gifts of any amount are important to Sweet Adelines, and you can help us meet the challenge being offered by Judy. Over the next three days, you'll hear from several of our members how Sweet Adelines programs have impacted their lives. You'll learn why they are investing in support for 75 years of life on a high note. Just like these members, I too have received innumerable benefits to my personal, professional, and Sweet Adelines life as a result of the educational opportunities made available. I'm excited about what our next 75 years will look like, and we know it must include a new way of delivering education through the use of a robust online learning platform. With your support, we can make it happen. Hi, I'm Judy Gordon. I've been a Sweet Adeline for almost 60 years. And in that time, I've won a championship quartet medal with All-Star Jubilee in 1981, and several international championship chorus medals with the High Country Chorus and the Harbor Lights Chorus. But it's not about the medals for me. It's about the joy of singing, the lifetime friendships and relationships I've made over all these years. In fact, I'm still friends with the bass I sang with in 1967. I know these are difficult times, but now more than ever, we need to step up and support Sweet Adeline's educational programs. That's why I've decided to donate $25,000 because Sweet Adeline's has supported me. I'm challenging each of you to make a gift, large or small, to the 75 years of life on a high note campaign. Let's try to turn my 25,000 into 50 or more. Here's to another 75 years or more. I hope to see you all soon. Oh, Judy Gordon, thank you so much. As a fellow queen, I just got to tell you, you inspire me. And by the way, I was there when you won. Remember the teeny weeny queenies, everybody? <laughs> Judy, we are grateful for kicking off this campaign in such a delightful 
and generous way. Honestly, and if you are inspired right at this moment to give, there's two ways you can do that. One, you can click on the donate button on your screen, or you could go to sweetadelines.com slash give. You can do that either way. That will be available to you through this entire convention and beyond. And when you go to sweetadelines.com slash give, you will notice there's two ways to give now. You can do a one-time gift, and I know any amount is so appreciated, but you can also click on recurring gift, and then you can determine how often it would recur, whether this is something you give monthly or daily. Um, so there's two options there as well. You'll be knowing and hearing more about that as the convention goes on, including some more inspiring videos about this campaign. <laughs> 